This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, as we get to uh, the big event, the big storyline, because boy, it is, um, it's at the clash of the champions, the February 6th event. This is where it all changes. Ultimately sting's going to get kicked out of the horseman and boy, it is a great piece of business. We've got Terry funk in the ring. He's going to host it. Let's track it and take a listen. There you see the old funker in the ring right there. Hello. I want to say one thing right now that there's two things that's going to be hard to beat in 1990. One of them is world championship wrestling because it's here to stay. And the other one is the horseman. All four of them. Rick Flair, Sting, Foley, and Arn Anderson. Here they are. Come on out, guys. So there you see the, the big introduction of the horseman, quite an eclectic group. They make their way down to the ring, and uh, now it's time for us to handle a little bit of business. Let's throw it back to Terry. Dennis is about to pick up Conrad. Attitude. I'd like to think that I have that attitude, but I know that you horsemen have it. I know that you have it, Oli. Let me ask you a question. You want to just do something and hang on that microphone, or you want me to hang on to it? Let me just say one thing, Terry. When we have an opportunity to get together on national television, uh, Oli thought that we were running long. Make a statement and tonight once again the horsemen are going to make a statement and on behalf of the horsemen the spokesman ole anderson has a few words we want to make sure that everybody all around the country has an opportunity to hear what i'm about to say and i want you in particular to pay attention to its thing because you're the reason we're here tonight. I want you to know you're not going to be a horseman anymore. It's over. No more horsemen for this thing. Yeah, don't close your mouth a second. I'm going to explain something to you. I want everybody to listen real close and you listen real close. When Rick called me and called Iron to come in here, it was for one reason. And the reason he called us in here was to get rid of you. And I tell you, I'll just be quiet. Just, there's, there's three of us standing here and there's one of you. Just wait a second. One thing that nobody looked for and nobody could figure was when you jumped in and helped Rick against this guy. We held off. A little later in the Iron Man contest, we came in that ring and we were ready to stick your head in the sand again. And as we came through the ring, Rick gave us this, eh, pay attention. Rick gave us that sign and waved us off. You were spared for the second time. And then something that nobody would have ever dreamed could happen, happened when you became one of us, a horseman. And you were a good horseman, no argument about it. You're a great wrestler, you're a tough, strong kid but you did the one unforgivable thing that we can never forget. You know what that was? When you signed that match to meet Ric Flair for the world title on February 25th, you signed your death warrant. You, oh, you listen now. I'm gonna tell you what I said to Rick. We all agreed we should just stop you right now, but Rick says, no, no. Now, he helped me one time we let him live one time, but on one condition. And the condition is this, you go to the promoter, you go to Mr. Jim Ross or whoever you got to talk yeah. to, and you tell him that you're going to cancel that contract with this man. Wait a minute, get over here, pay it to Just listen. Hey folks, it's time to take your podcast game to the next level. And you certainly want to get your almighty push. My God, we have to have a push, right? Well, get that over at adfreeshows.com. Now, I'm telling you, if you're a fan of Grilling JR, adfreeshows.com has the entire episode library, and it's got no ads, zero ads, zilts, none. Ad free and on video starting at just nine bucks. Did you hear what I said? 
nine dollars. You spend more than that at Starbucks, for God's sakes. Two mornings. If that's not all, folks, we've got tons of bonus content, including my after hours roundtable where drinking was involved with Eric and Tony. You simply will not find a better value in all of wrestling. Hey, look, don't make me go red ass, because by God, you know I will. Hurry over to adfreeshows.com right now and sign up. And I thank you. You listen to me, and you listen real good. Anybody, even a blind man, can see there's three of us and there's only one of you. We're going to spare your life. You got about two hours to make up your mind what you're going to do. And I'm telling you right now, it's only because of his nice kindness that we're going to let you live right here. Two hours, you make up your mind. You go tell Ross, you tell everybody in the world on this national TV that you're going to give up that chance at the world title. You understand? Thing, I bought you a little time a because of what you got. Nah, you're too easy. The whole deal is this. You got two hours to make up your mind, and you're no longer a horseman. And if we ever see you again, you're not going to be quite so lucky as you are tonight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on. Look at this. I tried to tell you. I want you the time. I do the fun thing. Fuck you. Get out of the business. I cannot believe this. This is the greatest thing oh. I've ever seen in my life. Oh. This is pathetic. Rick Flair, absolutely pathetic. He gave the guy a chance. Well, he gave the guy a chance. Yeah, you're a big chance. Fans, we're gonna, we'll be right back. This continues live. Don't go away. We'll be right back. So there you go. What a masterful angle. It's great. Now we know Sting is no longer a horseman. He's got two hours to decide, but it feels like the decision was made for him. Great angle, man. Terry Funk and Ole Anderson and Ric Flair and Sting. Just good stuff. And I got a shout out from Oli. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was well done. And I would say all those guys had a hand in, you know, Oli may have been the leader and the creative, uh, and I'm one of the guys that certainly had great influence. Uh, but the, all those guys were able to contribute. I mean, look what you got there. You got Oli and you got Arn. Arn ain't a bad talker in case somebody's noticed. Uh, you know, it's Terry Funk can cut promos in the level of anybody. So, uh, and always has been able to, that's one of his great skills. So I, uh, I wasn't surprised it was good, but I, what I found funny in the, after the, after the fact is how many times Ole tried to get everybody back on track and stay within the time that they had allotted for it. Do you notice that? Yeah. So, uh, he was directing traffic in a, in an Ole Anderson way, kind of like he would, if he was the real guy. So it was a, it was a good piece of business. And literally one hour later, it all went to shit. Ole Anderson is going to replace <laughs> thing in the cage match and Sting's going to run out to confront flair. But as he's climbing the cage and gets pulled down, he blows out his knee. Yeah. And this is going to be a major blow to the point where you guys all come back and meet in Atlanta, just to figure out what the hell do we do now? Right. On Tuesday, he's going to have doc, uh, surgery with Dr. Jim Andrews. Right. They're saying he's going to be out till August. Sting is hoping to beat that and come back in July. But we got a pay per view later this same month, and we're yeah. scrambling to figure out what yeah. in the world do we do. We know we're going to go with Lex Luger that day for Wrestle War, but do you remember any other ideas being pitched around? There are crazy ideas. I, I uh, suggested Muda. Uh, but the conflict there was his popularity. The face paint was cool. His, uh, moonsault was cool. He did a lot of cool shit that heels don't become heels for doing. Uh, 
that's not the traits you want to manifest in a great villain is they do cool shit. I don't think it gives you the wrong emotion. You have a hard time wanting to see them lose. And if you do not want to see a heel lose that you are booking, uh, then you're, you, you booked yourself into a corner. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I like Muda. He got nowhere, no traction. Uh, so it just, uh, we went with what we had at that point in time. I think we also discussed, uh, Rick Steiner, maybe. Wow. He was there, right? Yep. Uh, his thing came up a lot because he was such a believable looking guy in the Rick's not in the, uh, puppy dog stage, but or Scotty Steiner would, would, was also discussed at time to time, but you know, uh, I think a lot of guys are worried about controlling Scotty and it just was, it was bad chemistry. Conrad, that's what I'm saying here. We did, we weren't ready for that. There's no way to prepare for that. And we did. And now we got to go about developing plan B. And that was what was really touchy to say the least. So Lex Luger's the U S champ and, and maybe he's more of a heel, but boy, he's going to become baby face in a hurry. Now he's got to take on uh Ric Flair for the world title at wrestle war uh, stings fresh off of surgery, but we still have him appear before the crowd before the match. And they're just excited to see him towards the end of the show though. He comes down to show support. And, uh, what do you know? The horsemen come down and start putting the beat down on him. That distracts Luger. Luger goes to make the save. It's a big count out. And we end wrestle war with a count out audience, but the crowd, man, they're chanting. We want sting. So it's clear if there was ever a debate about who should the guy be, it should be sting. That's who the fans want, yep. but boy, we don't want to wait till July because now we've got to just stretch and kill time. And in theory. If Sting was anointed here in February, he would have been hot at your biggest time of the year from a live event standpoint, right? Yeah, yeah, he would have. Uh, it's just the stars that never get aligned, uh, and that that was a big. We missed all the way around Sting's timing, and then the injury occurred, which you can't control. You know, Lex wasn't ready for that 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 role. He looked ready. He had a, he had a great uh, aura about him. Obviously I've always been really high on that, but work-wise he was probably a year or so away. He needed to work in main event level matches with, with heels or, or, or with people like, uh, Gary Hart was managing cause Gary would help him. Uh, but he needed guidance and he wasn't getting much guidance. Uh, and that's too bad because anytime you get the wrestlers booking on the booking committee, you have issues like that because they have, a oh, uh, they have dues in their mind. They need to repay or, or take care of a buddy, uh, or whatever. And it just becomes non-objective. So that's kind of where we were. We were really up Shits Creek before they even made Shits Creek. you ever watch that show. I have. So let's also mention clash of the champions 11 in Charleston, South Carolina. We would see junkyard dog take on Ric Flair. It ends in a DQ when Ole interferes. And at this point, Sid vicious joins the four horsemen. And it's just a mess of bodies between everybody to brawl at the end of the show. In hindsight, was it the best association for sting to be paired with guys like JYD and Orndorff? Yeah. Uh, probably not. But that's all we had, right? We'd let it go to hell. And, uh, consequently we didn't have a lot of choices, Conrad. No, it wasn't the best choice for sting whatsoever. You hope, well, he'll get a little bit of a rub off of him. Uh, the match would be constructed where he stars at the end type thing. And, uh, but no, it wasn't the right. People. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.